In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make this mesmerizing 3D text effect where light just dances around the edges. I'm going to solve all your lighting and positioning headaches, and by the end of this video, you're going to have a pro level effect that is guaranteed to wow your audience. Let's get into it. Okay, so you can see we have DaVinci Resolve open here. We have a blank timeline. I'm just going to jump to my effects right here, drag a fusion composition in, and by default, fusion compositions are always five seconds. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, that's perfect. That's enough. That's all that we need. I'm going to right click on it and press open in fusion page. Now immediately we're greeted with fusion. Just right off the bat, I wanna let you know that your fusion might not look like this. Uh, I have my fusion set up so that my nodes are on this side. I have my two viewers here, my spline and my media pool. Yours might look different, that's completely okay. It doesn't change how you use it. So we're gonna get started here, okay? Just follow along. So to make this 3D text, uh, we need to use the 3D system, okay? Now, uh, to do that, we're gonna start by dragging a text 3D node into our workspace. So I'm just gonna take this, drag it in. Now, immediately what I'm gonna tell you is that you can't use anything 3D without a render 3D node. So I'm gonna take this render 3D node here and then connect this to my media out, okay? Simple, done, except nothing's attached to our render 3D. So I'm gonna take this text 3D. I'm also gonna add a merge 3D here because we're gonna be adding a virtual camera and then connect this to render 3D, right? So you can see I have text 3D, merge 3D, render 3D and then media out. I know it's a lot of stuff, but once you've done this enough times, it's super easy to remember. This is not difficult, I promise. Now, if you've seen any of my other Fusion tutorials, you might know that I typically like to work in just one viewer space here. Uh, however, in this instance, I'm going to keep both open and in just a moment, you'll see why. So to start, uh, let's first type something in our text 3D node. You'll see over here in the inspector, it works pretty much just like regular text node does. Uh, you just type in what you want. Uh, I'm gonna say subscribe because with my telekinetic powers, I'm convincing you to go down and do that right now. Okay, subscribe. I'm gonna change my font to Montserrat. Montserrat, I'm gonna, Montserrat, I can never say the name right. Pull it down a little bit. So the next thing we're gonna do, once you have your text looking the way you want it, is uh, we're gonna add a camera. Not like a real camera, but like a virtual in software camera. So check this out. In your toolbar up here, okay, you're gonna see this node, okay? Click this, drag it down into your workspace and connect it to Merge 3D. Merge 3D is really cool because it acts kind of like a multi-merge node in regular 2D fusion, uh, just for anything 3D related. So you can connect as many things as you need uh, to Merge 3D and it kind of just puts them all together into one system. Watch this, okay? You see how I have my media out here set to screen two, and that is our two viewers right here. This is viewer number two. Such that I can see everything in my 3D space. In the 3D space, uh, I'm gonna select Merge 3D, press one on my keyboard, and you see now I have this really cool 3D system here in my first viewer. This is where it gets fun, right? I have my text right here. It's like pushed into the camera, and the reason that I can't see anything in my viewer is because the camera is like too far close to it so i'm gonna zoom out and in my controls here uh how I'm, I'm i'm gonna tell you how i'm rotating around so i'm on windows and to rotate around your camera you want to press alt and then click your middle mouse wheel and drag and you get this rotating effect just like this you could scroll your regular mouse wheel just without pressing any other buttons you go up and down and when you press your middle mouse wheel and just drag and click you get to move around like this so pretty simple controls but for now all i'm gonna do is take my backwards arrow right here, the blue one, and pull it back. And you can see now my text is coming into frame. And I might have to zoom out here and uh, pull my camera back more. But now, based on where I put my camera, the text moves, right? Just because it's all relative. This is why I love 3D systems, because 3D systems give you the opportunity to put anything anywhere uh, and visually see it in a 3D space. It's really cool. But now you're wondering, okay, my text is 3D. What about the light? What about like the darkness, okay? So in order to even see lights in the first place, you have to go into your render 3D node and enable lighting and shadows. And once you do that, everything becomes dark. Now, for the sake of editing, if you want your background to be dark as well, which is probably better in this case, uh, I'm gonna click this right here, my little options, and check her underlay, check that off. Now you can't see anything. But if you wanted to do things the organic way, I'm gonna leave that on. And then here's another little trick for uh, just adding solid colors into a 3D system. If I wanted to make a 3D black background in the back, 
all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my regular old background node and then see this node right here called Image Plane 3D. What this node does is whatever you connect to it, it makes it in a flat image plane that can be connected to a 3D system. So I'm gonna demonstrate for you. I'm gonna connect my background to Image Plane 3D, connect my Image Plane 3D into my Merge 3D because I said you can apply multiple different things to this node and boom, you see this black background here, right? You could see it and it's super tiny. If we zoom in, might be able to see it a little bit better. Doesn't necessarily matter, can't see it. What we're gonna do is with the Image Plane 3D selected, it comes with this transform option in the inspector. And I'm just gonna drag this way up to the point where we can't see anything in our scene and we're good. Now, like I said, depending on how you want to make your background black, whether or not you turn the checkers on or off, or you want to do it the organic way with an actual black element in the scene, uh, at this point, you might not be able to see your text. So just temporarily, I'm going to go back into the render 3D node, turn off lighting shadows, and you can see now there's this like glitch effect in the background. And this is because the text and that black background plane are literally on the same plane. So like they're, they're fighting for who wants to be in front. So just so that I can put my text in front, I'm gonna select my text node right here. You could see in my 3D space, uh, you could see all the letters. I'm just gonna pull this forward and immediately it's not right in the middle of the black background anymore. With that done, I'm gonna go back into my render 3D node, turn this on and on. And immediately again, we have black. So about that lighting, here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is take your image plane, come into transform and set this five up to 10, okay? We wanna make this actually a lot bigger and it doesn't matter how big you make it, it just needs to be decently big. In your 3D space, zoom out and push this way back. We wanna put some distance between our text and the light that's gonna go in between this black and the text. Uh, but we don't want it to be like so far back. It's like that. You just want it to be back far enough that you can't see anything else. Okay. Now here's where it's going to get fun. Take your spotlight. Uh, it's in the default toolbar up here. So you could take this, drag it down, connect it to your merge 3d, or you can come to your effects right here, take spotlight. It's under tools, drag it in your workspace, then connect it to merge 3d. And you can see here, this is what we get. So if you look at our 3D space, we have our camera, our text, our light, and back here, we have our black. Okay, so we have this order of things. We have camera, text, light, background. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move this light source so that it's further back. It's a little more evenly spaced in between the background and the text. Uh, and then we're gonna flip it so that it faces the text. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna take this little icon right here up in my viewer, this little circle thing, click this and you can see now we have all of these like rotation controls for our light, right? So blue rotates it like this. I'm gonna control Z to undo. Green rotates it like that and red rotates it like this. So I'm gonna take this, transform it all the way around so that it's facing our text evenly head on. I'm gonna go back to our arrow controls here, zoom out and just push this back. Now you can see it's a little more evenly spaced between our black and our text, right? You can't see anything. What's what's going on? Well, our text isn't technically 3D yet. We're gonna make it 3D. So under text 3D, under your inspector here, you'll see this extrusion menu and extrusion is just like how far out it sticks. Uh, take your extrusion depth, drag this up and watch what happens. You start to see that, right? Isn't that sick? Isn't that like just absolutely cool? And now when you can see your text here, drag your light up and down and see how that affects your outline there. It looks just sick, it looks so cool. Now, right away, I can see that my text is a little too large, so I can do one of two things. I could either turn the size down in my inspector here, which works perfectly fine, or I can zoom out here and pull my camera back. Doesn't matter. In this case, pulling my camera back makes the background a little too small. So I'm gonna put it back where it was and just turn the text size down. So we got this looking really cool. So now we're gonna animate the light. Okay, so go back to your spotlight node under transform. This is where you can see the different aspects or properties of your transformational aspects. So when I click the up and down arrow on the light and drag it up and down, you can see the two properties that are changing here. So that means when I move it up and down, these two are changing at the same time. So easy, check this out. I want my light to start from up above, come down and go just like that. So I'm gonna put my light up here 
and in my timeline, you can see my timeline right here. I'm gonna move my playhead all the way to the beginning. Set these two to keyframe so that they can animate. Now I'm gonna set my playhead all the way to the end and drag my light down. You can see this really cool effect right here. And now if I move my playhead to the beginning and press play, you see, voila, it plays all by itself. Really cool. Now there's obviously more things you could do from here. Uh, everything after the render 3D node is processed as 2D. So all of this is all 3D and all of this is 2D. Now, once you're in the 2D space, you can add really cool light effects like halation. So check this out. I'm gonna select this, press shift space and search halation, add that on. And now if I zoom in here, you can see I got that subtle glow effect. Man, I love halation. I uh, I love color grading, and then so seeing stuff like this is just it just gets me so excited. I, I don't know how to how to describe it, but it gives you this just really cool filmic effect, and uh, you could pretty much do whatever you want from here. Uh, but this is how you go about doing this. Let's see how it looks in full screen. Looks absolutely amazing. It just gets me so excited. I love that. Now, like I said, you could make this text say whatever you want. You can keyframe the time to last however much you need, add whatever effects you want. This is just the basis of how to do this. And it just, man, I, I get so excited over this. This is just so cool. Fusion is your oyster, really. Mess with it, change whatever effects you think you need and uh, get the look that you wanna do. But uh, if you learn something from this, I'd be really happy to know that like you could do something with this effect, you know what I mean? I really love teaching you guys. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, you guys just learned how to make this sick, just absolutely incredible 3D text effect that is sure to impress. If you found it helpful, or if you learned anything, hit the like button, leave me any questions and comments you have down below and uh, subscribe to the channel if you think you have anything to gain from me, if you think you have anything to gain from any of my past videos on my channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.